Hi, I'm Channing McCorston, the container guy. Today, we're gonna to be installing a container modification world man door in the end wall of a 40 foot shipping container. If you're a container supplier and you're looking for one door that does everything, this is it. Stay tuned, hope you learn something. After landing a deal on national television in 2011, where his team pitched their idea of modifying shipping containers, he went on to start his own business. Since then, he's completed thousands of container modifications for clients in every major industry. Now, he wants to teach you everything he knows about container modifications and accessories. Channing McCorriston is The Container Guy. The biggest problem that everyone has when installing a man door in a container, including myself back in the old day, is uh, how do you shed the water? You can't just go to your local lumber yard and grab any wooden door and install it in a can. If you line it up between two corrugations and they're the outside corrugations, you might have straight lines there, but then you got the corrugations above the door. Uh, with this door here, it has the rain drip and this return fold edge here that tucks in behind the corrugations. What I mean by a container door that does everything is that the hinges and the door latch are centered on this door. So this door can be rotated one way or another. This rain drip is actually removable. So if you decide to install your rain drip up at the top here with your hinges to the left, now we have a what we call a left hand outswing door. And then if this rain drip here was installed on the bottom, it would be a right hand door. So here we have the rain drips here. The door actually comes with uh, two of them with every door. This rain drip uh, with the angled profile here is for the side wall corrugations. And then the other, that's just straight off. That's for the end wall corrugation. So that's actually what's uh, riveted up there right now. And then finally, this door will also work on insulated containers. So a smooth walled container, you just don't install the rain drip at all. Uh, the header here just sits up nicely up against the aluminum and then just nice silicone job up top. And so this door frame, it's designed, uh, it's corrugation dependent, so it works on outer corrugations. So it allows you to move it every 11 inches or 278 millimeters. So make sure that you're always referring to the drawing sent to you with this door to make sure you're cutting the right uh, RO. Grab your measuring tape, measure, and see if, you know, common sense, does the RO dimensions on the drawing actually match what will work in real life? So one thing to really note uh, is just that the RO will be two inches taller when you're using the, the drip caps. So if you're installing this on an aluminum insulated can, you'll be cutting it at, uh, for now, it's 80 and three quarters of an inch high, where otherwise here we're gonna be doing 82 and three quarter high and then 37 inches wide. We're on the outside corrugations on both. So somewhere over here is where the door will be riveted into place. So nice wide chunk of outer corrugation, 82 and three quarters up top. That allows for our top bulb seal. And so if you're not using that, just make sure to provision for that extra thickness. So the next step is to cut out the rough opening. I just wanna say we use an angle grinder and a six inch cutoff wheel. That's what we prefer. Leaves a nice clean edge when you're done. When you're cutting the bottom out especially, we provision for a little bit of weld left underneath the footer. So cut at the top of the weld here, sink your cutting wheel right through. And then once you have that cut out, just clean off any of the corrugation that's left standing, but we leave about 3 16 of an inch. So if you leave a little bit under there, that actually supports the threshold plate. And then right before you install the door, just get a little bit of silicone or caulk. That'll just seal that up from any ants or insects from getting in underneath your door. Another thing we want to note is just, we cut the bottom first and we leave a little bit of uh, sheet metal still attached to the bottom corners. So then once you're done cutting up the sides and across the roof and you drop the panel outwards, it just hinges on the bottom and doesn't slide back into the can and take out your ladder and hurt yourself. We have this uh, fancy top bulb seal, it's called. So it's like an automotive grade seal. Uh, we like to use it on the top edge of the corrugations. And so let's get started here with it. It's very flexible. The end wall corrugations are a lot more of a rigid corrugation than the side wall. It still manages to round 
the corners. There's some door seal that doesn't have any of the bulb on it. It's just the edge trim. And then that, you can go down the sides with it. And there, so yeah, that just sits right up against the top uh, lip of the, or top edge of the header. So we use the same thing for our uh, windows, our man doors, and the roll-up door frames. And so just instead of using silicone or caulking, we'll show you what that looks like once it's compressed. And we try to get, I think about a 40 or 50% compression on the door seal. It just seems to be what the manufacturer suggests. So Chandler's done a really nice job of cutting this open and he's just cleaned up the corrugation and left the weld. So our door will just sit right on there. We just like to put a thin layer of silicone all along the top edge of the corrugation. We're about to lift up the man door right now. Just make sure that the, the rain drip here gets up underneath the corrugations. And then once we get it up there, we'll drill back through from the inside through these laser cut holes, which will hit all of the inside corrugations and then we'll come from the outside and be able to rivet those in place. So we'll just jump down here. Up. And so on either outside edge, we kind of start at the bottom and make sure that we are centered between the outside corrugation. So a similar amount of corrugation left on both sides. And then as you go up with this door right here, it's actually leaning just a slight bit to the one side. So we're just gonna jump on the inside, pry up on the bottom here that's going to plumb the door to the corrugation and then we'll start riveting it in. So just make sure that, you know, you're not going up on a, a bit of a parallelogram because then just like this, the door is actually catching the bottom header, or sorry, footer. So then once we have this squared up, that's gonna open and close perfectly. So Chandler just put the first rivet in there and then we'll come across here and the first two are the most important. So we'll just make sure that this is uh, nice and square. And then maybe we'll even jump up top there and just make sure that this thing's closing nice. So there now we have it closing nice. The only thing hitting is the latch here. up here we've uh, slid in a little piece of the top bulb seal as well and then we'll just finish all that off with some black caulking just to make sure that no water penetrates through the header. So when using the top bulb seal because it'll uh, actually hold the header away from the inside corrugation a little bit you got to use longer rivets. You can see here these rivets just barely held if they're holding at all. So we're actually going to drill those out and grab our longer rivets and put those in but it's just something to note if you're not using the uh, the top bulb seal and just siliconing along the corrugations, perfectly fine to use the same depth of rivets as along the sides. And then we've also just put quick little dabs over the rivets in case the center pin of the rivet ever popped out and there's no daylight or water getting through there. And so for this door and what we include standard is the locking door lever. So keyed on the outside. I guess read the instructions on how these go in. It's pretty basic. You got the outside piece, inside. Two bolts will go right through and squeeze this plate to the outside and then just slide on your interior lever. So yeah, this door seems to close really nice and tight. Here we have that automotive grade door seal. So this is meant for things that move and uh, high use, things like a car door, right? So this door seal, you know, moves with the door. So if, you know, the can moves, the door seal moves and it's not fixed and stuck in one location. So it'll always work well. So the final closing touches for this door is we like to include standard, a storm chain. So that'll install up in the header and then on the door. And basically when it gets to 90 degrees or just over, it stops the door from over rotating and putting extra stress on the hinges that isn't needed. And so for this door here, the hardware that we've included is the locking door lever and a storm chain or check chain. Other options that are available are the panic hardware or crash bar. We have a sight glass option. We can do a half glass option and also a self-closing device.
So that right there is the installation instructions for the Container Modification World Mandor. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell for notifications or visit us at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.